Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Created by Rebecca. In this week's video we're going to be doing a woodland scene with a gorgeous owl and we're going to be using my favourite Joe Sonia Matte Flow Acrylic Paints. Let's get started. We're starting out with my rough sketch, my owl, there's going to be a moon, there's going to be some trees, and there's going to be a kind of clearing at the foot of the trees. And there's a nice diagonal movement. I'm using my Joe Sonia Matte Flow Acrylics with a wet palette. And I'm just going to dab out small amounts of my acrylic paint and then use my wet palette for all my mixing. I'm going straight in with Payne's Grey and I've got a tiny bit of Blue Violet mixed in as well. I'm using a really old brush for this, I'm just getting those base layers on. And I warn you now, this painting is going to look like nothing for quite a long time, <laughs> so just bear with me. This initial blocking out where you want things to be, moving them round a bit, it's all part of the process. This isn't paint by numbers, I'm not filling in each shape as I get to it, I am exploring around my painting. Now I'm starting to put the woodland floor in and I'm using antique green and a little bit of moss green just to start to sketch in the area. Then I've got Smoked Pearl, which I'm just putting towards the centre, and that's going to make it look sort of moonlit. Now I've got a little bit of carbon black in with my Payne's Grey and I'm working on the edges of my sky, just deepening them so that the lighter centre really does become the focus. This is Smoked Pearl and I'm putting this on as a base layer for the owl. and also the branch he's sitting on and I've got some mid-value cool beige and we're going to start to explore the owl himself As I've said before, when I'm doing this kind of painting, I have lots of references. I'm not working from any one reference in particular. I've grabbed myself lots of images of these owls in their environments. I've done pencil sketches, I've done pen and ink sketches. I'm 
just sort of feeling my way around so that I can come to a sort of composite of all the references and that makes it my own. just filling in underneath the branch I do actually change that later and adding more smoke pearl with a tiny bit of titanium white in it I think just to make that woodland floor look even more moonlit doing the really early stages of getting some different tones onto the owl's face and now coming in with titanium white and laying in that branch that he's standing on and also putting the moon in now in previous paintings I've done quite long winded moons that look realistic that they're they've got lots of detail on them lots of craters and tones and shadows and things but because this moon is going to be mainly behind the trees I'm not worrying too much and I'm actually letting the titanium white and I think there's some smoke pearl there as well pull up some of the Payne's grey from the background and I'm letting that resulting kind of bluey colour be the shapes and valleys and craters and things on the moon. I'm not worrying too much about it though. making a sort of reference as to where the eyes will be and then I take a really long break I leave the painting overnight I got up super early with the dogs and I came with fresh eyes and I started to draw into my painting with um, just a simple graphite pencil over the top of my acrylic paints and just started to sketch some of my detail back in, re-evaluating some of the shapes I'd made and then I can come back in and add more layers of paint, more layers of detail. So here I'm starting to draw in the trees. They're going to be very pale, very sort of ethereal. See that one completely overlays on top of the moon. I want them to be different widths, different heights, have different amounts of branching. and they're going to be growing out of the woodland floor at different positions. So some are really close to that little clearing and some are further back. And this is where I start to change up 
my decision on the ground line and I actually add in a little green hill that this background tree is standing on. There's another paint colour I've got going here that I haven't mentioned and it's forest green and I'm just blending it with the other greens that I've got going on on my palette. But by using those different tones of green, you can add the depth to the painting. Now we're going right into the owl's face and you can see where I've drawn on with the graphite just trying to work out where his features are, where the feathering colour changes, where his beak is and using my references I'm going in and dabbing in lots of different mixtures, blends of those sort of lovely brown cream colours adding a little touch of black here and there just to deepen it or grey it out because after all an owl is a predator so it has camouflage so that it can't be seen by its prey so all this speckling helps it sit in its environment and not be seen and it's important to study your reference looking for the shapes that the features make as they meet each other you're not just assuming what something looks like you are actually looking to see what it looks like if that makes sense <laughs> been using some burnt umber and also occasionally some little bits of burnt sienna just to add some sort of chestnutty areas. The main dark areas are his wings and his back but he also has quite a large amount of dark on his chest and what I've done is build up this kind of random background which I can then layer up with even more brush strokes. quite a long time off camera painting in the trees and just sort of beefing up their colour. They're all slightly different so that they again have a sense of depth. Some are a slightly warmer colour and some are almost white. And I've also added a little bit of extra shade to the, the sort of the little hedgerowy bit around the clearing. Now I'm coming in with a really fine brush and adding some twiggery to the trees just to really ramp up the amount of detail we've got going on. His 
claws were really interesting. They start off just behind the talon with a kind of <laughs> corally pink and then they are lots of shades of grey and then right where the feathers of his his belly come down over the top they're almost chestnut brown. Now I'm trying to define the junction between the main feathers, the body feathers and the claws and also the branch. So just adding in a really deep dark colour and I can soften that out with these dabs of feathers. colours over the top again in these sort of dabs which are following the shape of the feathers. coming over with some dark browns and aiming to make his, his chest look quite three-dimensional. His beak is a really interesting mix of colours. I'm not quite sure I got there, but uh, yeah, close enough. <laughs> now I'm coming in with some greys dark browns, really adding in some strong features to his face. And with a tiny brush, adding little tiny strokes of a dark, dark brown and black. to indicate the space between the little tiny feathers just next to his beak there. starting to come together now and having built up his face a lot more I'm now working on the other feathers of the head adding those pale dashes on which are all part of his camouflage a slightly dragged horizontal mark 
to indicate the feathers. This is um, the tips of his feathers have this white barring on, so the um, the edge of the feather is is very soft and broken. You know, it's not a, a defined mark. So I'm using the the edge of that brush to give me a sweeping movement to mimic that featheriness. I'm using different brushes to give different marks. And now with that tiny detail brush, adding some highlights to the eyes. yellow hue, I love that colour, and I've also got a little bit of titanium white, and I'm trying to add the next layer to his beak, and I still haven't got it quite right, so I'm adding some cadmium yellow light, and that's getting me closer. <laughs> Here I'm starting to define the tail feathers with some titanium white, a bit of smoked pearl, and some dark umber, some burnt umber, and some black to get that barring. pleased with the level of detail I've got on him now and I need to bring up the rest of the painting to fit in. Part of that is going to be adding these shadows which are cast from the trees by the light of the moon. and then adding in some stronger shadow at the bottom of these little hedgy bits that surround the clearing and I'm doing that with forest green mixed with a little bit of the Payne's grey and then I'm giving a little bit of extra dimension to little hedges with a range of the colours that I've used throughout the, the greens coming up to the tops of them where they're touched by the moonbeams. I felt that the woodland floor was looking a little bit flat so I have now added in some grasses just to break up that flat layer.
the last thing I'm going to do is add some of this moss. Now, in all the reference photographs I've got for these owls, this moss is almost growing off the trees like like hair, like beards. And it seems to really characterise the environment they live in. So just on the branch that he is sitting on, I'm not doing it everywhere, just on the branch he's sitting on, I'm going to create this lovely, long, bright, almost limey green moss. And I'm going to focus it on the outside edges, so close to the left hand side and then as the branch forks towards the right hand side. I'm, I've mixed together a variety of greens and yellows and the creamy whites and the smoke pearl just to add lots of tiny little dabs of colour just to give that some real texture. come in with a wash of the umber and just create quite a shadow on the branch. Now I'm just defining the tip of the tail. fun always slightly daunting <laughs> this is an MT washi tape and I really like how it, it comes off um, I have noticed that I've got a couple of dabs of paint onto the border there but I, that's fine There was a long time there where I thought, oh, I'm not going to get him through the ugly stage, but <sighs> success, yeah. Yeah, I'm really pleased with him. I am going to scan him and then he will be available in my Redbubble shop as prints. Uh, you can have him put on a mug, you can have him on a t-shirt, you can have him as a sticker, notebooks, a plethora of things. The link to my Redbubble shop is in my channel banner. It is also in the description box below the video. So yes, please go check it out. There's lots of other things that I've been working on, painting and digitizing just for you. Enjoy. <laughs> right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.